Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Bruce Stores. We're going to be discussing his amazing book, Christian Science. It's Encounter with Lesbian slash Gay America. Now, it's available for purchase through Amazon as well as barnesandnoble.com. And people, you're going to want to pick up copies of this book. And I'm going to tell you why in just a few moments. Before we go any further, though, I want to take this opportunity and point out that Bruce was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by one of the best advertising firms in the business. And people you already know, I'm talking about Author Reputation Press. So listen to me. For my writers out there who have gone through their process creating their masterpiece, and now you find yourself in a precarious position. Because this entire time you were creating your book, you forgot that you're going to need some help moving it. Well, if that's you, give yourself the best gift you could possibly give and contact ARP. They're one of the best in the business to do it, and this is exactly what they specialize in. So head on over to authorreputationpress.com today and gather all the ways that their fantastic team is going to help you do just that. And listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Bruce here on the line. Now, as I mentioned, his book, Christian Science, is one that you're going to want to get your hands on. This is an inspirational story that was developed from the blatant discrimination that people were facing and continue to face in certain areas, unfortunately, because of their sexual orientation. This is something that when we just examine the prejudices and the discrimination that people face, it's something that is very disheartening. It is something that is maddening. But it's also something that when you hear some of the success stories, when you hear some of the stories about the people that have persevered in the face of such oh, such catastrophic discrimination, it really is one of hope and inspiration. I'm telling you, this book is layered. And it has so much to offer. You're going to want to run to Amazon, Barnes & Noble and pick up your copies. And by the time we've concluded here today, you're going to do just that because you're going to realize how valuable of a book this truly is. And at the end of the day, don't take my word for it. Take Bruce. It's his book. He's written it and he's going to be able to articulate it much better than I ever could. So do me a favor. Sit back and strap in. Bruce, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you very much for being a guest. How are you doing today, sir? It's a privilege to be here, Benji, and please don't put yourself down. You're doing a good job, and I think your listeners really look up to you for for what you do. Well, listen, I I appreciate it, Bruce. I mean, I, you know, you are, when it comes to this subject matter, and when it comes to your book, you truly are the expert. Now, I'm going to be able to hold my own, I'm sure, uh, but you are the expert, and you're going to be able to articulate this particular topic better than most. So it is a true pleasure to have you here with us, and we're really looking forward to this discussion. Before we jump into your book, Christian Science, Bruce, start by telling our our listening audience a little bit more about yourself. Well, you know, I've done a lot of employment work outside the United States. Left college and went right directly into the Peace Corps. It was back when it first started in the early 1960s. And the government sent me to Guatemala. And I have to say those were the best two years of my life because the culture is so different, but the difference made it exciting. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not to be found. Differences aren't to be made frowned upon. I think diversity is, is, we need to learn it as to being a wonderful thing. And, and I certainly learned about that in the Peace Corps. It's a big lesson. My next job was from there, I went to the, the, the Vietnam War, was at its height. And uh, I went with the State Department, the USAID, United States Service Agency for International Development. And worked with uh, refugees, people who had lost their homes due to the war, and to try to do resettlement efforts for them. And another job I had later on was to be a recreational coordinator for Bell Helicopter in Iran just before the revolution took place. 
uh, there's no provisions for any kind of entertainment by that country. There were no English language movie theaters, no English language television, nothing. And so we had to start from scratch and find things for people to do. Uh, wow. And then when I finally retired 28 years ago, and I at age 57, and I came directly to Mexico. And I've lived here ever since, and I love the culture here and the people and everything about it. You know, I can definitely attest to that last part. You know, my wife is, is she was born and raised in Mexico, and we've taken plenty of trips there. It is a wonderful place. We love visiting. It is a beautiful place, and I can also attest to that culture and the lifestyle there. It is something to behold. Bruce, welcome to People of Distinction. It's a true pleasure. Without further ado, let's jump into your fantastic book, Christian Science. Tell us a little bit more about it. Well, of course, you know, the name of the religion is very controversial, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think what gets published in the news more than anything else are, are babies that die because they didn't get medical attention or something like that. Unfortunately, that takes away from the public the other uh, concepts of the, of the church, which uh, adherents believe is radical and revolutionary. But the book is not about religion. It does not teach religion. It does not explain religion. The book is primarily about trying to get the heart, the, the difficulty of the board of directors being authoritarian. So it's authoritarianism versus freedom of conscience. And that throughout history, throughout Christian history at least, has been a very big thing. And there's been a lot of battles fought over that. And this book has just a segment of that. You know. mm-hmm. So that's that's the basic thing there, is, is trying to see what they do. It explains the discrimination of what happened, what took place. It also describes what the gay people did in, in return. Because there's no real way the church channels to have a minority opinion. The church periodicals do not provide for minority opinions. Um, and there's just, no, there's just no way at all. So the gays have done things like uh, they've gone to the church headquarters in Boston for major demonstrations. They carry signs and walk around the church. They give out pamphlets explaining their position. And that's happened several times, uh, particularly in the uh, 1980s, when discrimination was probably at its worst. Yeah. You know, Bruce, let's go into inspiration next. Now, uh, given your background and your experience... I think I could assume the answer to the next question, but you know what happens when you assume, man, so I'm not going to do that to you. Let's go directly to the source. What inspired you to write this book? That's a good question, Benji. Thank you. It's really hard to pinpoint something like that because inspiration can come from a lot of different fields. Uh, I didn't come out of the closet as a gay person until I was 40 years old and I wasn't sure what to do with my life and how to deal with it. But I was able to get a job right away with a newspaper. It was called Seattle Gay News. And I was able to write about uh, political and religious topics. And I had a tremendous satisfaction of doing that. I really, really enjoyed it. I did that for several years. That was the first time in my life that I thoroughly enjoyed writing. And I became really, really enjoyment about it. And when a lot of these um, problems were going on with the church, and I was able to write, write it up in the, uh, both in the uh, Seattle Gay News as well as in the magazine that was uh, done by gay Christian scientists uh, to explain um, our position and what was going on. And that, too, was, was very, very enjoyable, but are worthwhile, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's just gotten really, really excited about it. So what happened was, not thinking of a book at first, but I became, but I accumulated in this way lots and lots of information. And it goes back in the book all the way to the 1940s. Wow. And, uh, and comes up to the near present. So I guess all those things, a lot of influence and so I into writing. There you have it. You know, thank you very much. So, Bruce, it sounds like 
this was information that you had compiled over the years and it was almost a call to action, right? It was almost like these stories needed to be told to right, the masses. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't see that at first. Yeah. I was just trying to get the next article out. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. People, again, Amazon, Barnes & Noble are where you got to go. Christian Science. It's encounter with lesbian slash gay America is the title you have to pick up. And Bruce Stores is the author you need to thank for bringing it to your table. Bruce, next question here as we follow up and continue along. What are you hoping to see your readers do or take from this book? I don't know. I don't really have a real answer for that because I'm not sure what what they can do. Whether it will change many minds is problematical. Um, I think one of the things that makes the book valuable is the fact that the church is very secret. They don't tell you what's going on yeah. uh, in their headquarters and how their decisions are made or even what they're trying to decide about. They're extraordinarily secretive. There is no transparency in the church. We don't have exact figures on the financial situation, and a lot of people are concerned about that. And uh, there's just no information on anything else. They, it seems really nilly when they make a decision, and we don't know what what was backed into it. There's five members on the board of directors. We never know who voted for what decision or, or anything. Mm-hmm. The numbers are left in the dark. Well, that leaves anyone that has been who was able to get um, get information, it gives them a lot of power because they, they can get it out to the rest of the, the membership. And uh, there will always be people that are doing that. Uh, it's happened before, usually in the form of newsletters. Yeah. Um, that would go out to the, the membership. And the main that's the main weapon I think we seem to have. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to do much else. You know, curiosity for myself here with this next one, Bruce, but what would you say was a highlight for you in writing this book? Or if not a highlight, something that maybe surprised you that upon beginning this journey, you weren't anticipating this particular thing happening. What would you say was a highlight or a surprise for you, Bruce? To be able to talk with countless individuals who had some kind of confrontation with the church over their sexual orientation. Mm Mm-hmm. And there are many of those individuals, and those were in different. Their own, many of them have their own chapters in the book. The one that was probably the most important was when a reporter for the Christian Science Monitor, an international daily newspaper, when she was fired, it really upset the gay community a great deal, and they went to great lengths to to help her. She was suddenly cut out without any income. The church didn't provide for her to get unemployment compensation. So they started a fund for her, which enabled her to maintain her apartment and to keep on living life. And that worked out real well. And they had a lot of demonstrations at the church and with the members and everything else trying to get justice in the church. And finally, the reporter herself, she took the church to court. That She tried to sue the court, the church. And as far as we know, it was the only person that ever took the church to court based on discrimination based on sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. And it was in the courts for about a year, a couple of few years. And it ended in a settlement, which one of the conditions of the settlement was that neither side can discuss the results of the settlement. But we have no idea what the reporter that was fired, we have no idea what she was uh, entitled to at the end. And that was the biggest. The other places people were Mostly just kicked out of their church, and I was one of them. I was kicked out of the local church because I I could have stayed as a gay person if I were working on a healing to try to heal the gay sexuality, but I refused to, to say that, and I lost my membership in the church, and that's just fine. My next question here is going to be shifting gears to to your writing style. All right, but it, of course, is still connected to the book and the subject matter that is personal to you. But Bruce, how do you handle the vulnerability that comes with sharing your work with the world, particularly when it touches upon such personal experiences and emotions? Well, I have to tell you that the people that I interviewed were more than helpful. I mean, 
they went into great detail as to their as to their experience and to their feelings and about the conversations they had with the church, everything. And that was a big, big help. And I owe it to those people for, for really they were the ones that made the book a success because they they were very forthright in, in their conversations with me. Mm-hmm. People, I, I'm telling you, I'm at the edge of my seat. This is something that I think is so remarkably informative, but it's also going to give you a deep insight to something that, again, unfortunately so, is still happening today. Depending on the community in which you come from or reside in currently, this is something that is not new by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to religion and religion's outright discriminatory beliefs against people with certain sexual orientations. And I think that what makes this book so powerful, not only is the specific stories of the individuals that have been interviewed by Bruce, but also how it's going to raise awareness, how it's going to generate conversation. Because I think that, to me, is really where so much of the power of this book lies. Bruce, I I love what you're doing here, man. You have absolutely embodied to the full to the fullest the fullest extent a person of distinction and we are so happy and thrilled that we were able to get you on the network with us. My last question for you as we close out. We have discussed so much information here today, but is there anything that we haven't yet touched up on? that you really want to make sure our listening audience is aware of? Well, I think I should mention that the policy against discrimination was changed. This happened around the turn of the millennium. Mm-hmm. and But the church made no announcement about it. There was no announcement whatsoever. They, they found out when there was a section on the, on the church's website where you could ask questions about Christian science, and somebody asked about what, what they what their position was relating to gays, and this time it was positive. There was, there was no discrimination, so we found out that way. Again, the church doesn't want to, when it comes to controversial questions, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing was true when, uh, when they ended their discrimination based on race. That was very important. They started it in identifying uh, that which churches were predominantly black, in 1922, and this ended in 1966. That date, that year is important because it is about one year after Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the Montgomery, Alabama uh, public transportation. Mm-hmm. And that incited a, a beginning of a change of consciousness in the greater public, in the wider public in the United States. Absolutely. People, I'm telling you, this book is the precipice. Not, they changed it. And this is, by the year 2000, it's the feeling, the consciousness of the greater public in the United States was beginning to turn more favorably toward gays. Mm-hmm. And so it was society in both cases that ended the discrimination. I'm telling you, this book is the precipice of so much. And like he just said, it only takes one particular action or event to start to shift the perception. Now, I know that we've already made a lot of headway, right? I mean, there's things already moving in this upward direction. We still have a long way to go. And this book is just another piece to that puzzle to really help to really help push us along. Amazon, Barnes & Noble are where you got to go. Christian Science is the book you have to pick up. Bruce, this has been a true pleasure, as I mentioned before, an absolute honor. Thank you once again for being a guest on People of Distinction. Thank you, Benji. I couldn't have asked for a better interview than you. Sure, you can write to the heart of the subject. That's very important. So appreciate it.